In this next section, I'm going to um, form the radiating element of the antenna into a circle. And as you'll recall, the, the length of the antenna is 40 inches. Uh, it's going to be formed into the shape of a circle, but there's going to be a gap at the end of about, let's say, an inch and a half. So the circle size will be 41 and a half inches. And I want to explain why 40 inches was chosen for the length of the antenna element before we go any further so everybody can understand that. I've written out a little explanation here and I'll go through it step by step. It's pretty easy and I use a simple method. I don't try to remember any formulas uh, like some people do. But anyway, why is the, the antenna element 40 inches long? First of all, the speed of light is approximately 186 mile, thousand miles per second. Uh, you could do that in meter or kilometers in meters but I tend to do it in feet and inches because that's what I'm used to. So one mile contains 5,280 feet. So if we multiply 186,000 miles times 5,280 we come up with 982,000 or 982,080,000 feet per second and our target frequency is going to be 144.2 megahertz or 144,200,000 hertz or cycles per second. So if we took the number of feet that uh, light travels in a second and divided it by our frequency, it equals 6.8105 feet. So that's the wavelength or one wavelength at our target frequency. So uh, that's what I'm showing right here. So the the dipole itself is basically one half wavelength, or you know the the active element is one fourth of a wavelength, and the counterpoise is one fourth of a wavelength. So if we took one wavelength at 6.8105 feet and divided it by two to get our dipole length, it would be three point 405 feet. If we took 3.405 feet times 12 to give us inches, we would have 40.860 inches. Electricity or um, RF doesn't propagate through uh, other media other than space as fast as it does through space. Traveling through aluminum or copper or wire is going to go slower. So I just chose a propagation velocity of 98 uh, percent. That's probably being generous. It's probably going to travel a little bit slower than that. So I took 40.86 inches times 0.98. It gives us 40.04 inches. So that's how how long the element has to be, or that's how long it's going to take the RF to propagate one half of a wavelength being slower than the speed of light and I just rounded it to 40 inches even. The next thing I wanted to show here was how the the antenna elements gonna look so it's it's gonna be a circle and there's gonna be a gap between the two ends of the element once they're been around and I've chosen about an inch and a half so the antenna length is 40 inches it's gonna be formed into a circle with an inch and a half left between the ends of the elements so the overall circle size will be uh, 41 and a half inches with a diameter of 41 and a half divided by pi equals 13.21 inches gives us a radius of one half that diameter of 6.6 .6 inches so I'm gonna make myself a little compass and draw out a circle so that I know how it um, is going to look and I form a circle that looks somewhat like a circle rather than an ellipse. Okay, I'm going to draw out a circle about the size of the antenna element on this piece of cardboard. And I'm, I want to draw a pretty good circle. It's not doesn't have to be exact, but I want in the form or the shape of a circle. So I'm going to make myself a little compass here since I don't have one handy. And I'm just going to use this paint stick, a nail, and a pencil. First thing I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to use this nail as the center point. So I'm just going to tape on the nail to the end of the stick.
Okay, and as you may recall, our radius was 6.6 .6 inches, so I'm going to measure six, approximately 6.6 .6 inches, so a little over 6.5 inches here, and make a mark. And I'm going to tape the pencil on at that mark. Okay, now we have our crudely built compass, and I'm going to draw a circle here with that. Okay, now I have a circle about the size of the antenna element. The next thing I'm going to do is start forming the element in the shape of the circle. If you've watched one of my other videos about uh, making the rod bender, uh, this is the little rod bender setup I made. I've adjusted it fairly close here and I'm going to start bending this element into the shape of a circle using this little jig here. I haven't made an, an antenna element that's round out of aluminum before, so this is like my first attempt at this. And it's pretty tough. The copper is a lot easier. But again, I, I wanted to avoid copper this time around. Okay, I'll come back to this after I've got it formed a little bit more and uh, go from there. Okay, after quite a bit of uh, muscle effort, I've got it formed in a pretty good circle. It's not absolutely perfect, but it's good enough. I went ahead and marked an inch and a half space on here so that I could bend it and have it the right uh, spacing also. And uh, it's pretty close to my circle that I laid out here. So I think I'm ready to go ahead and hook it up and uh, try it out. I'll have to make some measurements on the uh, the other one out there to find out how far away from the center point that the gamma tube strap is hooked on and so forth so that uh, I'll try to hook it up as closely to the original dipole as possible to get a, a start on the adjustment again. Okay, I'm getting ready to mount the, uh, the new round element on the uh, antenna here. You'll notice here I got a piece of tape on this piece of wire that goes into the gamma tube. It shows me how far into the gamma tube it had to be for the right capacitance. And also on the, uh, the element I measured over from the center of this bracket to the edge of the strap to see how far it had to be. It was um, 5 and 9 sixteenths on this setup. Of course that will all vary on how the antenna is made and the capacitance and everything so it will probably be different in your case anyway uh, let's get ready to put everything together okay I'm out on my back patio and here's the, uh, the strap and the gamma tube and I'm going to slide it on here and it's going to be hot today it's uh, still in the morning but it's already pretty warm and I don't know that I want to uh, be out here all day. I've already marked on the element here where this approximately where this should be. Okay, there's that. Let's go ahead and uh, install this now on the, uh, the mounting bracket. I don't know if I, I may just leave this tube straight or I may bend it in a curve like this. The other the other antennas I've made, I've had the tube on the inside. Um, I found it's a little bit easier just to, to leave it below the antenna, so that's how I'm going to make it in this particular setup. So let's go ahead and move over to the uh, mast, or my temporary mast section, and hook it up. 